Hi, and welcome to the 12th stop on the Freedom Trail. This will be the Paul Revere House. Now we have crossed into the North End, which is one of the oldest um, areas of Boston. Um, today it's known as the Italian District. They call it the North End, but it's where you might wanna go for great Italian food or maybe a wonderful cannoli at Mike's Pastry. Um, there's several uh, bakeries and uh, Italian restaurants in the area. So here we are at the Paul Revere House. Now, a lot of times when I'm talking to my group about the Paul Revere House, I want them to have a good view of the Paul Revere House. So I step into this little courtyard of the Sacred Heart Church, and I, this is where I do my talk. And I just recently discovered by overlaying like old maps onto new Boston maps that this is the site of property that was owned where I'm standing <laughs> that was owned by my um, 10 times great ancestor Thomas Joy so I find that pretty cool um, so anyway so when Paul Revere purchased this house in 1770 it was already a very old house they think it was built around 1680 so it would have been like a 90 year old house and Thank goodness we have it today because it was about to be demolished in 1902 when Paul Revere's great-grandson, John Reynolds, stepped in and purchased the house to save it from being demolished. They turned it into a museum. And so today you can go inside and get a tour of the house for a very nominal fee. I think for adults it's $5 and for uh, children and students it's a lot less even. Uh, but if you go inside, uh, about 90% of the house is original. So Paul Revere's uh, father was a French Huguenot who came to America when he was just 13 years old, and his name was Apollo Rivois. <laughs> now once he got here, he decided he needed a more English sounding name, so he changed the family name to Revere. So Paul was actually born in the North End, not in this house, but somewhere around here, in 1735. And they think the birth date might have been around January 1st, but they're not exactly sure of the, the day. So Paul Revere grew up learning goldsmithing. And when he was just 19 years old, his father died, leaving him to take on the family business. And then Paul served in the French Indian War. And in 1757, he married a woman named Sarah Orne, and together they had eight children. Now, when Sarah was giving birth to the eighth child, she passed away. The child survived for another nine months. And uh, within that first year after her death, Paul Revere <laughs> remarried, and he married a woman named Rachel Walker, and they had eight children, <laughs> so Paul had lots of kids. I I think five or six of them passed away um, before entering into adulthood though, unfortunately. So after the French and Indian War, when Paul Revere had come back and you know he, he was doing fine in the silversmithing business, but he needed to supplement his income because they were in such a great uh, recession, the economy had just plunged. So he took on some odd jobs as a courier, um, he, as an engraver, he became an engraver. Remember the uh, Boston Massacre engraving that he did. So he did some of that with a lot of the politically charged engravings. Uh, but he also <laughs> became a dentist. <laughs> You want to try that for a part-time job? Um, anyway, one of his clients was Dr. Joseph Warren, and they ended up becoming very good friends because they had a lot in common. They you know, shared the same political interests, and they both were members of the Masonic Lodge and of the Sons of Liberty. So unfortunately though, Dr. Joseph Warren, um, maybe you've heard his name, because uh, he was part of that revolutionary cause, but he, died at the Battle of Bunker Hill. Now, if he had, that was in 1775. Now, if he had gone on to live, his name probably would have been a little more prominent. Um, you probably would have heard more about him. So, um, Paul Revere also was a participant in the Boston Tea Party. <laughs> and as a courier, he was going back and forth from New York to Boston to report on political unrest. And he was also kind of uh, intelligence for the military happenings around Boston and uh, he, they would regularly meet at the Green Dragon Tavern for him and he would report on what was happening with, with the British soldiers. Now the Green Dragon Tavern is 
still in Boston today. It's not at the original site, but it's that it's still there and it's a neat little tavern to go inside and have a beer or whatever. Uh, now he's also, of course, known for his famous midnight ride out to Lexington and Concord. Um, he was riding out to alert the Patriots of the British coming. They were coming for Sam Adams and Jan John Hancock, but also because they had heard that there was weapons stored out in Concord. You know, if it hadn't been for um, the famous poem by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, The Midnight Ride of Paul Revere, we might not know much about Paul Revere. He might have just slipped through the pages, but so I'm glad that he wrote the poem and that we know about him because I think he was a very interesting character and he lived a very long and useful life. Now, after that midnight ride, he was back to silversmithing. He worked on a lot of very high-end products because he was an artesian, but he would make uh, things like tea urns or uh, bowls, spoons, uh, things that most everyday people couldn't afford. Um, and for that, he had a foundry where he made things out of cast iron. So uh, he also owned a hardware store. <laughs> and when copper came about, he was a pioneer in creating the first copper rolling factory. And they made the sheathing that covered the Capitol Dome, um, the old state house, which was, remember, it's our second stop on the Freedom Trail. But they also, uh, uh, covered the whole of Old Ironsides, um, the USS Constitution, and as well as other battleships. But by 1792, uh, he was one of the best known bell casters in New England. And at that time, he was in business with his son. So it was called Paul Revere and Sons. And all over New England in churches, you can still today find Paul Revere bells. Um, but as far as the copper business go, which started in 1801, uh, that business is still running today and um, you may remember at a time there was like Revere cookware but it's called the Revere Copper Products and it's based in Rome, New York. So you can go to their website and check that out if you want. So I think that's pretty neat that um, his business that he started back in 1801 just continues on today. So that's a little bit of history about Paul Revere and I will catch you at the next stop and I'll see you at the Old North Church.